Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast, one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We are glad you are listening. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemist's Podcast. We are glad you are listening. We are one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. We are glad you are listening. We are one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemists Podcast. We are glad you are listening. We are one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemists Podcast. We are so glad you are listening. Feel free to subscribe on Spotify and tell your friends and colleagues about the podcast. Our Deepest Fear by Marion Williamson Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we, let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Our deepest fear by Marion Williams. You are very important, especially to us here at the New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant. Vous êtes très important, surtout pour nous ici au New Chemist Podcasting Group. Votre écoute est significative. Usted es muy importante, especialmente para nosotros aquí en The Nuche Mist Podcasting Group. Usted escuchando, es significativo. Você é muito importante, especialmente para nós do The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Você ouvindo, é significativo. Είστε πολύ σημαντικοί, ειδικά για εμάς εδώ στο The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Το να ακούς είναι σημαντικό.
Sie sind sehr wichtig, besonders für uns hier bei The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Es ist wichtig, dass du zuhörst. Je bent erg belangrijk, vooral voor ons hier bij The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Dat je meeluistert, is veel betekenend. You are very important. Especially to us here at the New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Bienvenidos al podcast del nuevo químico. Carlos Irza, testo podcast to New Chemist. Welcome by the podcast van The New Chemist. Bienvenue sur le podcast du Nouveau Chimiste. Bem-vindo ao podcast do Novo Químico. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Work hard. Be value-driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Travaillez dur. Soyez axés sur la valeur. Tu peux le faire. Vous pouvez grandir et l'apprendre. Vous pouvez être la différence dont vous et votre communauté avez besoin. N'abandonnez pas. Nous sommes ici pour vous encourager et vous encourager. N'abandonnez pas. Trabalhar duro. Seja orientado por valores. Você consegue. Você pode crescer e aprender. Você pode ser a diferença que você e sua comunidade precisam. Não desista. Estamos aqui torcendo e torcendo por você. Não desista. Duepses clirá. Na odigite estinaxia. Boris na tocanis. Μπορείτε να μεγαλώσετε και να το μάθετε. Μπορείτε να είστε η διαφορά που χρειάζεστε εσείς και η κοινότητά σας. Μην τα παρατάς. Είμαστε εδώ για να σας ζητοκραυγάσουμε. Μην τα παρατάς. Τραβάχα δούρο. Σέα impulsado por el valor. Puedes hacerlo. Puedes crecer y aprenderlo. Usted puede ser la diferencia que usted y su comunidad necesitan. No te rindas, estamos aquí animándote y animándote. No te rindas. Werk hard. Wees waarde gedreven. Je kunt het. Je kunt groeien en leren. U kunt het verschil zijn dat u en uw gemeenschap nodig hebben. Geef niet op. We zijn hier om voor je te roten en te juichen. Geef niet op. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. 
Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. In the world of pharmacy, we lay the claim. Knowledge and compassion is the golden flame. Science and practice side by side they groove. In a student's journey, we find the move. I'm spitting rhymes with that medical twist. Talking about the med that makes you exist. E poison, e poison. Concrete and receptive crit, anemia of cancer. You know we combat it. Erythromycin, erythrocin, fighting infections, bacterial invaders. They face rejections. Escitalopram, Lexa, Po, battling depression. This wraps a remedy. Here's your confession. Disclaimer. Please see your GP or your P or your NP. This is just for educational engagement and it's motivational. We're rolling with the meds. Don't you forget the names from A to Z. They're in this rap game. Indications on point, they light up the flame. Prescription to the rhythm, that's the name of the game. Esomeprazole, Nexium, the GI infection slayer. Heliobacter pylori, no longer a player. Estradiol, oral. Estrace, for a woman's grace. Vasomotor issues are that atrophic embrace. Esopision Lunesta for when it's time to dream insomnia is no match we're a dynamic team Etain Necret Etain Ercept Etain Ercept Let's draw that down Etain Ercept Etainer set, embryo, arousal in the mix, ankylosing spondylitis, get your fix. We're rolling with the meds, don't you forget the names from A to Z, they're in this rap game. Indications on point, they light up the flame prescription to the rhythm, that's the name of the game. Ethanol estradiol. An eternal gestural ring. Uva rings the choice. Contraception on point. Gotta drown the noise. Etodolac loading for that general pain. Release the aim. We ain't playing no game. Exonatide by Yetta by Leron on the scene. Diabetes mellitus type 2, it's routine. Is that to my Zetia for that cholesterol high? Familiar hypercholesterolemia. Wave it goodbye. Familial hypercholesterolemia. Wave it goodbye. We're rolling with the meds. Don't you forget the names. From A to Z, they're in this rap game. Indications on point, they light up 
the flame prescription to the rhythm. That's the name of the game. Promoted Dean. Pep said for good if he no more heartburn. Now you're living carefree. Promoted Dean Pepsi for good. It's the key. No more heartburn. Now you're living carefree. For boxes stop your lark. Hyperosemia is full, not adequately treated. Let that info flow. Fellow dip pain plan the hypertension pain. Blood pressure in check. We're breaking the chain. Fennel five break and tara. Fennel glides the call. Hypertriglyceridemia will conquer it all. We're rolling with the meds. Don't you forget the names from A to Z there in this rap game. Indications on point, they light up the flame. Prescription to the rhythm, that's the name of the game. Fentanyl oral and transdermal. Duratisic in style. Chronic pains are struggle, but reverse time. Fexofenadine allegra. For allergies that sting, seasonal rhinitis let freedom ring. Fentanyl oral and transdermal. Duragesic in style, chronic pains are struggle but reverse style. Fexofenadine allegra for allergies that sting, seasonal rhinitis let freedom ring. Fidoxomycin difficile. See difficile's demise. We're on a mission, no more compromise. Finasteride, proscar, propitiates the end. Benign prostate hyperplasia, we transcend. Finasteride, proscar, propitiates the end. Benign prostatic hyperplasia. We transcend. We're rolling with the meds. Don't you forget the names from A to Z there in this rap game. Indications on point, they light up the flame. Prescription to the rhythm, that's the name of the game. So there you have it. A prescription rap spree. From A to Z, we've got the remedy. Remember, remember, only for intellectual engagement and recreational. Please see your GP and PRPA or pharmacist because these ideas are just motivational. Indications are clear. We set you free. Prescription to a rhythm, that's the way to be. Indications are clear. We set you free. Prescription to the rhythm. That's the way to be. Thinking by W.D. Wingle. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't. It is almost a cinch you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in this world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before. You can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Remember, strategy, hard work, collaboration, and execution. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, good afternoon. It is so good. It is so thrilling. It is so exciting. Today we're going to switch things up a bit. We're going to be having a vis-a-vis, tete-a-tete, 
conversation on pharmaceutical chemistry. Um, so, uh, I won't be referencing the notes of some of my professors. However, I won't be showing the notes. I'll be referencing the notes. Um, it'll just be an audio discussion with, with uh, the notes uh, being referenced. So, the first topic for today will be serotonergic and antidepressant agents. A reference to the notes of specifically Dr. A. Kulkarni. Um, so, let's just go through them some introductory ideas, the biosynthesis and metabolism of serotonin, receptor types and subtypes, as well as we're going to be looking at uh, targeting and serotonergic signaling. And then we'll conclude um, for that topic. Uh, But this is going to be a long episode, very, very long episode, because we're going to go through serotonergic and antidepressants, opioid agents, cholinergic agents, as well as some fundamental ideas associated with pharmaceutical chemistry. So let's begin. Let's begin. Okay, so serotonin. Serotonin, otherwise known as 5-hydroxytryptamine, or 5-HT, was identified as a neuroreceptor ligand in in the late 1940s. Serotonin is associated with depression slash anxiety, schizophrenia, hallucinations, drug abuse, appetite control, vomiting, etc. Just a quick note, these episodes are not intended for medical advice, counseling, or suggestions. Please refer and consult the relevant medical professionals, whether it be your physician, your GP, your general practitioner, your physician your NP, a nurse practitioner, your physician assistant, as well as your pharmacist. Um, make sure they are licensed in the state and registered with the board as well. So, continuing on, advances in histochemical fluorescence techniques led to the application of radio ligand binding assays for 5-HT and elucidated the pathophysiological role in a variety of aforementioned disorders, so depression, schizophrenia, obesity, etc. It is also established uh, it is also established that types and subtypes also refer to as, as families and subfamilies. So the types and subtypes are also referred to as families and, sub- and subfamilies of the serotonergic receptors, similar to opioid receptors. Okay, so now I'm not going to show any structures in this. This is going to be a tele-tech, a face-to-face conversation about these concepts. So, serotonin, biosynthesis, and metabolism. Hydroxylation at the 5 position by tryptophan hydroxylase present in the serotonergic neurons. So, let's just delve into what's happening with this serotonin biosynthesis pathway. Let's delve in a bit. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, if we look closer or closely at the pathway, we see tryptophan goes through tryptophan hydroxylase, so tryptophan, which has a characteristic uh, indole functionality, so it has a characteristic indole functionality, so an aromatic functionality, and the classic amino acid uh, backbone structure with your carboxylic acid, your alpha carbon, with the substituted amino acid through, or is processed by aromatic amino acid decarboxylates to form summation of metal hydroxytryptophan. So moving right along, serotonin release, uptake, and signaling. Biosynthesis takes place in serotonergic neurons. Biosynthesis release and reuptake mechanisms similar to other receptors. Uh, so is similar to the re- biosynthesis release and reuptake mechanisms are similar um, to what occurs in other neuroreceptors. The serotonin is stored in presynaptic neuronal vesicles. When released, serotonin interacts with the postsynaptic serotonergic receptors. So the action of 5-hydroxytryptophan is terminated either by its diffusion away from the synapse with subsequent metabolism or reuptake mechanism back to the presynaptic neuron. So serotonin transporter, also known as 5-HTT, is a sodium-dependent 
monoamine transporter protein. So when we talk about some of these neurotransmitters, we recognize that they are monoamine. And that's the case with many of the catechol amines. So catechol, the catechol functional, catechol group, catechol structure, and catechol amine. Um, so like dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, those types of things. Um, so moving right along, monoamine transporter protein, and it's also a druggable target for the development of antidepressants. So that's, that's an important point to take note of. Serotonin transporter, also known as 5-HTT, is a sodium-dependent monoamine transporter protein and is a druggable target for the development of antidepressants. So seven types of 5 hydroxytryptophan there are seven types of 5 hydroxytryptophan receptors denoted by 5-HT1 to 5-HT7. All except 5-HT3 are coupled to G-proteins. 5-HT3 is a ligand-gated ion channel selective for sodium cations and potassium cations. Okay, so serotonin receptor types. So you have the 5-HT1 family. So further divided, subdivided into six subfamilies, 5-HT1A to 5 hg F, 5-HT1F, so 5-HT1A to 5-HT1F. Subfamilies are present in the CNS. So 5-HT1A through E, also found in blood vessels, is involved in functions such as anxiety, addiction, vasoconstriction, etc. With the exception of 5-HT1E, all other receptors of this family exhibit high affinity for 5-carboxamidotryptophan. So with the exception of 5-HT1E, all other receptors of this family exhibit high affinity for 5-carboxamidotryptophan. So uh, also, um, 8-hydroxy-2-di-n-propylaminotetraline or OHO or 8-OH-DPAT represents a selective 5-HT1A agonist. Very important. 8-hydroxy-2-di-n-propylaminotetraline or 8-OH-DPAT represents a selective 5-HT1A agonist. This suggests that an intact indole nucleus is not required for 5-HT1A agonism. Let's keep going. Okay, so 5-HT1A selective agonists. And we're looking specifically at long-chain aryl piperazine, piperazines. So long-chain aryl piperazines or piperazines. So long-chain long chain aryl piperazines, LCAPs. LCAPs possessing long chain substituents at the N4 papyrazine show good selectivity for 5 HT1A. So, long chain aryl papyrazines possessing long chain substituents at N4 papyrazine show good selectivity for 5 HT1A. Buspirone was the first agent from this class approved as an anxiolytic drug. Structurally related compounds, gepirone, tandospirone, and ipsopirone, these agents act either as a full or partial agonist of 5-HT1A. So remember, an agonist has 100% efficacy, partial agonist has about 0 to 100, falls in that range of 0 to 100 efficacy or intrinsic activity. Um, and we're talking in respect to the endogenous ligand for the receptor. And that's a, that. those concepts have been discussed in the previous episode. So agonism, antagonism, partial agonism, inverse agonism, all those other good stuff. So uh, continuing on, general structure, you typically have the aryl group, the pyrazine group, your spacer, so your methylene spacer, and then you have the terminus. Agents containing phenyl, substituted phenyl, Heteroaryl, all of those groups 
show good activity. So agents containing phenyl, a substitute of phenyl, heteroaryl, all of those groups all show good activity. Changes in the papyrazine structure are not tolerated. Important to note. Changes in the papyrazine structure are not tolerated. The placement of the amide or the imide groups at the terminus is essential for good activity. One more time. Placement of the amide or the or and or the imide groups at the terminus is essential for good activity. All of the drugs shown above have an imide, I-M-I-D-E, imide, moiety in the terminus. Very important to note. Very, very important. Okay, so 5-HT1, a selective antagonist. So remember, antagonist just blocks the function of the agonist. Some compounds belong to this class display structural features similar to classical agonist, buspirone. So some compounds belonging to this class display structural features similar to classical agonists, buspirone. However, the aryl portion is usually comprised of two methoxyphenyl moiety. So the aryl portion is usually comprised of a, of a two methoxyphenyl moiety. Agents such as uh, WAY 100 135 or WAY 106 35 are referred to as a silent 5 HT1A antagonist since they lack any agonist activity. So spirone is a 5-HT1A antagonist, but also displays high antagonist affinity for 5-HT2A and D2 receptors. So spirone is used for the treatment of schizophrenia. So when we talk about spir, we're talking about those spiro, those spirocycles, so spirocyclic functionalities. Okay, so let's keep going. Clinical significance of 5-HT1A agonists and antagonists. Drug development efforts explore the 5-HT1A agonists as therapeutic targets for depression and anxiety. There seems to be good correlation between 5-HT metabolism and higher tendency towards depression aggression, etc. So drug development exports. So we're talking about the clinical significance of 5-HT1A agonists and antagonists. So drug development efforts explored 5-HT1A agonists as therapeutic targets for depression and anxiety. There seems to be a good correlation between 5-HT metabolism and higher tendency towards depression, aggression, etc. Jeperone produced significant symptomatic relief in patients with depression. Buspirone was effective in the treatment of mixed anxious slash depressive patients. Mixed anxious hyphen depressive patients. So lack of a select lack of 5-HT1A antagonists, lack of selectivity in or with 5-HT1A antagonists. So the activity at other 5-HT receptor subtypes, dopaminergic receptors, etc has limited the drug development efforts that specifically target receptors. This specifically targets that receptor. Compounds like LY426965 are more metabolically stable and also display improved oral bioavailability as compared to WAY compounds. So LY426965 is being developed as a smoking cessation drug. So let's keep going. 5-HT1D receptor selective ligands. So sumatriptan, imatrex, was identified as the first 5-HT10 selective agonist with only modest selectivity, 2 to 20 fold, for its affinity towards 5-HT receptors. Particularly, 5-HT1A and 5-HT1F. Sumatriptan belongs to the indole alkylamine class of compounds. Example, zomatriptan, zomig, naratriptan, emerge, 
Here's a trip to map salt. These agents bind and display high affinity and improve selectivity for 5-HT1D. Agents like somatriptan, mesotriptan, possess superior ability to cross the blood-brain barrier and are used for the treatment of migraine, cluster headaches, etc. Okay, so 5-HT2 receptor family. In general, 5-HT2 family of receptors are found in the CNS blood vessels, GI tract, peripheral nervous system, and in smooth muscles. This receptor family is considered as a therapeutic target for the development of antipsychotics, anxiolytics, anorectics, so appetite suppressant agents. The subfamilies 5-HT2A, 5-HT2B, and 5-HT2C. There is significant amino acid sequence homology between 5-HT2A and 5-HT2C, greater than 78%. This explains the overlap in ligand affinities for these two receptor subfamilies. Classic hallucinogenic drugs like lysergic acid, diethylamide, amide, act as full or partial agonists for this receptor. So, partial or full agonism for this receptor occurs with drugs, classic hallucinogenic drugs like lysergic acid diethylamide. The lack of type and subtype selectivity coupled with strong hallucinogenic potential has limited the use of 5-HT2A agonists. Okay, so 5-HT2A receptor antagonists and N-alkylpyridines constitute a major class of selective 5-HT2A antagonists. Best known examples are ketansurin, ritansurin, etc. These agents belonging to this class in general exhibit greater receptor selectivity for 5-HT2A slash 2C. So ketansurin is used for its antihypertensive properties. Ritansurin was investigated for the treatment of schizophrenia. So atypical antipsychotics such as risperidone, used for schizophrenia and bipolar disorder treatment, clozapine, used for schizophrenia and anti-suicidal drug, and olanzapine, schizophrenia and bipolar treatment, also exhibit 5-HT2A antagonist properties. Unlike typical antipsychotics, these newer compounds have a lower tendency to exhibit extra pyramidal side effects such as tardive dyskinesia. So stiff, uncontrolled body movements. Tricyclic antidepressants also are antagonists for 5-HT2A. So let's keep going. 5-HT2B and 5-HT2C receptor subfamilies. 5-HT2B receptors are present in the CNS and cardiovascular system. They are known to cause pulmonary vasoconstriction. Many ligands that bind to 5-HT2B receptor also bind to 5-HT receptors, and there is no approved drug that specifically targets 5-HT2B signaling. 5-HT2C receptors, so at this, to date, at, this, at, at the point of this reading, there was none that was seen by uh, myself and or the person who wrote this, these set of notes. The 5-HT2C receptors play a role in regulation of mood, anxiety, and feeding, etc. So the lorcasserin, the 5-HT2C selective agonist, has been approved as a weight loss drug. A common side effect includes headache, side effects like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, also uncommon, have been reported for, although uncommon, have been reported for lorcasserin. Okay, 5-HT3 receptor family. So here we have the ligand-gated ion channel selected for sodium cations and potassium cations and not GPCRs. Its structure is comprised of five subunits around a central ion conducting pore permeable to sodium, potassium, 
the calcium ions. Biomology is closely related to nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So homology common ancestor. So agonist activation leads to the activation of the nausea and vomiting center in the brain stem. When activated, these receptors are also reported to cause seizures. 5-HG3 antagonists have also been used as anti-emetic agents. These agents not only improve the quality of life, they also allow for the increasing dosing. So increasing, they also allow for increasing the dose intensity of many chemotherapeutic agents, increasing the response rate for anti-cancer treatment. Patients taking paclitaxel, cyclophosphamide, and 5-FU, the 5 fluorouracil and other emesis prone drugs are often predosed with anti-emetic agents. So, 5-HT3 receptor antagonists. Bemestron was identified as one of the first 5-HT3 selective antagonists. Many agents belonging to this class contain tropane or a tropane-like nucleus bearing a basic amine. Tropicitron, so an anti-emetic, and ricacitron, anxiolytic, zatocitron, anti-nausea compound with anxiolytic properties, are examples of tropane containing 5-HT3 antagonists. Ondansetron and renzapride, both anti-emetic compounds during cancer chemotherapy, gastroenteritis, etc. Palo Palo nosotron, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, are examples of non tropane containing 5 HG3 antagonists. Regardless of the presence or absence of the tropane ring, all of these compounds possess at least one set of protonation. Renzapride is also a full 5 HG4 agonist and 5 HT2B antagonist. Okay, so 5-HT4 receptor. It belongs to the GPCR superfamily. It is coupled, it is coupled with GS agonist resulting, excuse me. It belongs to the GPCR superfamily. It is coupled with GS agonist. Activation results in increased intracellular cyclic AMP, so cyclic adenosine monophosphate levels, primarily located in the CNS, gastrointestinal tract, urinary bladder, heart, etc. 5-HT4 agonists include Sisa pride, Moza pride, Brucalo pride, and Renza pride. Okay, 5-HT4 receptor. Sisa pride increases the motility of the upper GI tract and is used to enhance gastric emptying. Serious side effects include drug-induced arrhythmia. Moza pride promotes gastric emptying and is used for the treatment of gastro- esophageal reflux disease, GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, etc. Brucalopride is used for the colonic motility, mobility. Brucalopride is used for the colonic mobility. It does not induce arrhythmias. Zacopride, Renzopride, and Mosopride are also 5-HT3 antagonists. Zacopride displays anxiolytic properties at the therapeutic dose. Structurally, all of these compounds contain a primary aralamine as part of an aniline or dihydrobenzofuran ring. So 5-HT4 receptor agonists and antagonists. So 5-HT4 receptor agonists. Tegaserod was introduced as a 5-HT4 agonist for the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome, but was later withdrawn after reports of increased heart attack and stroke. It is also a 5-HT2B receptor antagonist. 5-HT4 receptor antagonist. Fibocerod was developed for the treatment of atrial fibrillation, AFib. The drug was also developed as a potential therapy for heart failure. 5-HT5-7 receptors. 5-HT5 receptors are predominantly found in the brain and are further subdivided into 5-HT5A and 5-HT5B receptor subfamilies. So 5-carboxamidotryptophan is a non-selective agonist for this receptor. One more time, 
acetylcalcitriptophan is a non-selective agonist for this receptor. 5-HT6 receptors present in CNS and plays a role in motor control, emotional stability, cognition, and memory. So 5-HT6 and targeters have been shown to reduce appetite and promote weight loss. 5-HT7 receptor is found in the central nervous system and in the cardiovascular system. It is involved in thermoregulation, circadian rhythm, learning and memory is also investigated as a target for depression. So serotonin reuptake transporter. Serotonin, re- serotonin transporter, CERT or 5-HTT, is a monoamine transporter protein that transports serotonin from the synaptic cleft to the presynaptic neuron. It belongs to the monoamine transporter protein family. CERT regulates the duration and magnitude of the postsynaptic response to 5-HT and allows the body to, reu- to reuse serotonin and prevents the need for constant biosynthesis. CERT comprises of 12 transmembrane helices. Both amine and carboxytermini are present intracellularly. It exhibits 50% homology with norepinephrine reuptake transporter and dopamine, dopamine transporter, etc. So serotonin reuptake transporter. Serotonin reuptake transporter is an attractive target for drug development. Agents that block cert, so serotonin reuptake transporter increase the synaptic resonance of 5-HT are uh, used for the treatment of a, variety, of a variety of disorders such as depression, obsessive compulsive disorders, panic disorders, and anxiety. Tricyclic antidepressants such as amitriptyline serve as non selective blockers for CERT and NET. Their active metabolites may also block CERT and NET with varying degrees of selectivity. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are much more selective for CERT over NET and lack most of the activity at other receptors as seen in tricyclic antidepressants. Examples of this class include fluoxetine, peroxetine, fluvoxamine, cetraline, acetalopram, trazodone, etc. Agents such as vilazodone act directly on 5-HT receptors, so 5-HT1A agonists, and also and are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Proxidine Paxil is used as an antidepressant for the treatment of major depressive disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. Common side effects include drowsiness, dry mouth, trouble sleeping, asthenia, so general weakness, sexual dysfunction, loss of libido, erectile dysfunction, etc. In general, these class of compounds possess at least two hour rings and sites of protonation. In general, excuse me, general these class possess at least two hour rings. Chemically, peroxidine is a se- peroxidine is a secondary amine containing compound and it contains four rings. Okay, fluoxidine, so Prozac, is used for similar conditions as peroxidine. In addition, it is also used to treat binge eating disorder. Common side effects are similar to peroxidine. In addition, this drug is reported to cause discontinuation syndrome. Rapid discontinuation of therapy causes dizziness, disturbances, imbalance, stinging, numbness, electrical shock, like sensations, etc. Fluoxetine and other SSRIs when taken with MAL it may cause serotonin syndrome. Symptoms include fever, agitation, diarrhea, seizures, muscle weakness, etc. Thus, these drugs are contraindicated in patients taking MAL inhibitors. So when taking, excuse me, Fluoxetine and other selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors when taken with MAO inhibitors may cause serotonin syndrome. These symptoms include fever, agitation, diarrhea, seizures, muscle weakness, etc. Thus, these drugs are contraindicated in patients taking MAO inhibitors. Fluoxetine is a CYP2D6 inhibitor and in some cases is contraindicated in dextromethorphan containing cold 
and cough medications. It blocks dextromethorphan metabolism. So selective, not selective. Serotonin, we have to take transporter. So uh, serotonin, we're focusing on the serotonin, we have to take transporters. Trazodone is indicated as an antidepressant for the treatment of major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders, and also to treat alcohol dependence. Unlike peroxidine, the drug does not display anticholinergic side effects. Instead, it is used to report it is reported to cause fainting, increase in suicidal thoughts, cause arrhythmias, etc. Overdose may lead to serotonin syndrome discussed previously. Okay, Velazodone is a both a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and a 5-HT1A agonist. It does not display strong affinity for other serotonin receptors and selective for serotonin reuptake transporters versus norepinephrine transporters or dopamine transporters. Nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, dry mouth are common symptoms. Paresthesia, so tingling, pricking, numbness, etc. are also reported. An overdose, the drug is known to cause serotonin syndrome. Okay, so that's the end of the serotonin segment. This is how we calculate, no time to hesitate, units of activity, will demonstrate, in pharmacy and healthcare, you gotta be first rate, measuring potency right, there's no room for debate. Units of activity, our aim is oh so clear, in micrograms per milligram, we'll make it crystal clear, so when you work in healthcare, there's no need to fear, we'll teach you how to calculate, have no doubt, have no fear. This is how we do it, when it's about potency, units of activity, that's our responsibility, in the world of healthcare, it's all about accuracy, calculations are the key, to ensure safety. From antibiotics to vaccines, and everything between, potency is the game, it's on the big screen, standardized measurements, the FDA's routine, comparing against the standards, we keep it clean. Units of activity, our aim is oh so clear, in micrograms per milligram, we'll make it crystal clear, so when you work in healthcare, there's no need to fear, we'll teach you how to calculate, have no doubt, have no fear. This is how we do it, when it's about potency, units of activity, that's our responsibility, in the world of healthcare, it's all about accuracy, calculations are the key, to ensure safety. Oh, the strength of vaccines, and biologics too, measured in units, that's what we'll pursue, we'll follow the guidelines, as they always do, for safety in healthcare, we'll see it through. So insulin's our friend, with its U100 blend, for diabetics, it's a lifesaver in the end, syringes and pens, they'll comprehend, when it's spelled out as units, mistakes will amend. Units of activity, our aim is oh so clear, in micrograms per milligram, we'll make it crystal clear, so when you work in healthcare, there's no need to fear, we'll teach you how to calculate, have no doubt, have no fear. This is how we do it, when it's about potency, units of activity, that's our responsibility, in the world of healthcare, it's all about accuracy, calculations are the key, to ensure safety. So now you've learned the song, about activity, and units, keep it in your heart, it's like a pharmacy blueprint, with accuracy, and standards, there's no room for disputes, this is how we calculate, it's our healthcare tribute. In the realm of enzyme kinetics, we delve, to understand the reactions that enzymes propel. They speed up the rate of chemical change, with constants and rates that we must arrange. Enzymes are catalysts, they enhance the speed, of reactions that occur with remarkable heat. Kinetics is the study of their work, and understanding it, we do not shirk. First order reactions, simple and clear, one substance to a product, the path is near. With rate constant K1, they proceed, as A transforms to P at a rapid speed. 
the concentration of A decreases with time, exponential decay, it's not a crime. The rate of change, proportional to A's state, first order reactions, we contemplate. Reversible reactions, first order in kind, equilibrium sought, with forward and rewind. Keck tells us if P or A will prevail, in this dance of reactions, like a fairy tale. Second order reactions, more complex they are, two molecules collide, forming P, it's bizarre. The rate is now squared, K1A be the key, to describe how they react, we must agree. In the transition state, they're temporarily strained, with higher potential energy, they're briefly pained. The enzyme steps in, with its induced fit embrace, lowering activation energy, increasing the pace. Michaelis meant an equation, it takes the stage, describing enzyme kinetics, page by page. Km and Gat, the constants we reveal, to understand enzyme efficiency, it's quite a deal. Competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive too, inhibitors at work, changing the enzyme's view. They block the active site, or the complex they bind, altering kinetics, their effects we must find. Cooperativity, positive and grand, allosteric enzymes, in control they stand. They respond to changes, in substrate they thrive, maintaining balance, in the enzyme kinetics dive. Enzyme kinetics, a realm to explore, with constants and reactions, there's always more. Understanding these concepts, both theory and practice, helps us decode the enzymes kinetic dance ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to delve into the fascinating world of measurement systems, with a specific focus on the avertipoise and apothecary systems. These systems may seem archaic in the modern world dominated by the metric system, but they still hold significance in the field of pharmacy and healthcare. Our aim today is to demystify these systems and understand their quantitative relationships with each other and the metric system. The text we started with emphasizes the importance of accurate measurements, particularly in pharmacy and healthcare. Units of activity are a fundamental concept in this context, and they are often expressed in micrograms per milligram. So, let's break down the avertipoise and apothecary systems, understand their components, and explore how they relate to the modern metric system. The avertipoise system The avertipoise system is the most common system of commerce in the United States. It's the system we use when we purchase and sell goods by weight. Here are some of its key units, 1 pound, LB, avertipoise equals 7000 grains, GR. This is our fundamental unit in this system. 16 ounces, ounce, avertipoise make up 1 pound, LB. For example, if you buy a 1 pound bag of coffee beans, you're actually buying 7000 grains of coffee beans. This system is used for most everyday items you might encounter in your daily life. The apothecary system The apothecary system, on the other hand, is a bit different and is primarily associated with pharmaceutical and medical practices. Here are some of its key units, apothecary's fluid measure, 60 minims, M, make up 1 fluid dram, 3 or 3 degrees. 8 fluid drams, 150 minims, equal 1 fluid ounce, 75 or 3. 16 fluid ounces make up 1 pint, PT. 2 pints, 32 fluid ounces, equal 1 quart, QT. 4 quarts, 8 pints, make 1 gallon, GAL. Apothecary's measure of weight, 20 grains, GR, make 1 scruple, 3. 3 scruples, 60 grains, equal 1 dram or dram, 3. 8 drams, 480 grains, equal 1 ounce, 3. 12 ounces, 5760 grains, equal 1 pound, 15. This system might seem complex, but it has historical significance in the world of pharmacy. The grain in the apothecary system is the same as the grain in the avertipoise system. However, the other units, like the dram and the ounce, are different. For example, 1 pound, LB, in the avertipoise system equals 7000 grains, while 1 pound, LB, 
in the apothecary system equals 5760 grains. Now, let's move on to some practical examples to demonstrate the conversion between these systems and the metric system, example 1, convert 5 ounces, avertipois, to grains. 1 ounce, avertipois, equals 4375 grains. 5 ounces x 4375 grains slash ounce equals 21875 grains. So, 5 ounces in the Averdepois system are equivalent to 21875 grains. Example 2, how many grains of a chemical are left in a 1 ounce, Averdepois, bottle after 3 drams are dispensed. 1 dram, Averdepois, equals 60 grains. 3 drams x 60 grains slash dram equals 180 grains. 1 ounce, avertipois, equals 4375 grains. 4375 grains, 180 grains equals 4195 grains remaining in the bottle. These examples illustrate the practical application of the conversion between the avertipois and apothecary systems and the metric system. It's crucial for pharmacists and healthcare professionals to be able to perform such conversions accurately. In conclusion, the avertipois and apothecary systems may seem outdated, but they still play a significant role in certain fields. Understanding these systems and their relationships to the metric system is essential for anyone working in pharmacy and healthcare, as it ensures accurate measurements and, ultimately, patient safety. So. Whether you're dealing with grains, ounces, or any other unit of measurement, remember that precision is paramount in the world of healthcare. Inter-system conversion Table of practical conversion equivalence Conversion equivalence of length I'm equals 39.37 in 1 and equals 2.340 M Conversion equivalence of volume 1 ml equals 16.231 M 1 M equals 006 ml 1 F3 equals 3.69 ml 13% equals 29.57 ml 1 PT equals 473 ml 1 GAL USY equals 3,785 ml conversion equivalence of weight LG equals 15.432 GR 1 kg equals 2.201 B, Abuwar, 1 GR equals 0.065 grams or 65 mg 1 ounce, Abuwar, equals 2,835 grams 13 equals 311 grams 1 1 B, Abuwar, equals 454 grams 1 IB, Apote equals 373.2 grams other equivalents 1 ounce, Abuwar equals 437.5 gr 153 equals 480 gr 1 gal, USY equals 128 f 313 pounds, water, 455 gr i 15 ladies and gentlemen, our journey through the fascinating world of measurement systems continues as we now venture into the realm of inter-system conversions. We've previously explored the avertipois and apothecary systems, understanding their individual components and relationships with the metric system. Now, it's time to see how these systems can be interconnected and converted, ensuring seamless transitions between them. Conversion equivalence of length The metric system is the most widely used system of measurement worldwide. Here are some conversion equivalents between the metric system and the imperial system, inches, 1 meter, m, is approximately equal to 39.37 inches, n. 1 inch, n, is equivalent to approximately 2.54 centimeters, cm. This conversion is particularly useful when dealing with lengths and dimensions, especially when you have measurements in different systems. Conversion equivalents of volume Volume conversions are essential in various fields, including pharmacy and healthcare. Here are some practical volume conversion equivalents 1 milliliter, ml, is approximately equal to 0.061 cubic inches, in superscript 3. 1 cubic inch, in superscript 3, is equivalent to approximately 16.39 milliliters, ml. 1 fluid ounce, FL ounce, is approximately equal to 29.57 milliliters, ml. 1 pint, pt, is equivalent to 473 milliliters, ml. 
One gallon, gal, in the United States is equal to 3,785 milliliters, ml. These conversions are vital when you're working with medications, solutions, or any liquid substances in the healthcare field. Conversion equivalents of weight weight conversions are equally important, and they often overlap with length conversions, e.g., length to weight ratios. Here are some conversion equivalents for weight 1 gram, g, is approximately equal to 0.0353 ounces, ounce. 1 ounce, ounce, in the avoirdupois system is equal to approximately 28.35 grams, g. 1 grain, gr, is equivalent to approximately 0.065 grams, g, or 65 milligrams, mg. 1 pound, lb, in the avoirdupois system is equal to 453.6 grams, g. 1 pound, lb, in the apothecary system is approximately equal to 373.2 grams, g. Understanding these weight conversions is essential for precise measurements and accurate dosing in healthcare and pharmacy practices. Other equivalents here are a few additional conversion equivalents to keep in mind. 1 fluid ounce, FL ounce, in the avoirdupois system is approximately equal to 437.5 grains, GR. 1 fluid ounce, FL ounce, in the apothecary system is equivalent to 480 grains, GR. 1 gallon, gal, in the United States is equal to 128 fluid ounces, FL ounce. 1 pound, LB, of water is approximately equal to 455 grams, G. These conversions serve as bridges between different systems and are indispensable for maintaining precision and consistency in various fields, especially healthcare and pharmacy. In summary, the world of measurement systems is a complex yet interconnected tapestry of units and conversions. We've explored the relationships between the metric, avoirdupois, and apothecary systems, enabling healthcare professionals and pharmacists to navigate seamlessly through the intricacies of these systems. So, whether you're dealing with lengths, volumes, or weights, understanding and applying these conversion equivalents is fundamental in ensuring the highest standards of accuracy and patient safety in healthcare. In the bustling world of pharmacy school, the first 10 weeks were always a whirlwind of information and learning. Students delved into the complex realm of pharmaceuticals, memorizing drug names, their indications, and the nuances of their mechanisms of action. For Sarah, a diligent student with a passion for pharmacology, these weeks were both exhilarating and challenging. As the virtual lectures streamed in, she diligently clicked on the link to the Quizit page, which served as a repository of knowledge for the course. Each drug and its properties were like puzzle pieces in the grand mosaic of patient care, and she was determined to master them all. Week 1 brought her to Epiodin, also known as Epigen, Procrit, and Reticrit. This drug was a lifeline for patients battling anemia due to cancer chemotherapy. With careful study, she understood how it worked and its importance in cancer treatment. Erythromycin, a powerful antibiotic used for bacterial infections, was her focus in week 2. The drug's mechanism of action fascinated her, as it targeted harmful bacteria, sparing the human cells. Escitalopram, or Lexapro, used for depression, occupied her thoughts in week 3. She delved into the complexities of mental health and how this drug could provide relief to those in emotional distress. In week 4, Sarah learned about esomeprazole, sold under the brand name Nexium. This medication was a crucial tool in the fight against Heliobacter pylori, a bacterial infection causing gastrointestinal distress. Estradiol oral, marketed as estrace took her into the realms of hormonal regulation in week 5. 
It had applications in addressing vasomotor dysfunction and atrophic conditions in the vagina or vulva. Week 6 brought her to Esopitian, commonly known as Lunsta, a savior for insomniacs. She pondered how a tiny pill could grant people the gift of sleep. The subsequent weeks were a whirlwind of knowledge, from adenecrept for ankylosing spondylositis to ethanyl estradiol and adenogestrol ring for contraception. She navigated her way through the maze of medications, all the while keeping a close eye on drug interactions, contraindications, and patient-specific considerations. As the weeks progressed, Sarah developed an affinity for the complexities of pharmaceutical science. She also became adept at answering questions like which drug inhibits enzymes irreversibly, aspirin, and what may cause myocardial infarction as one of its adverse drug reactions, ibuprofen. Her proficiency shown through when asked, if a child has RISE syndrome, then which NSAID should be avoided? She knew the answer was aspirin. In her spare time, Sarah often contemplated the various mechanisms of action for NSAIDs, which were her favorites. She understood that these drugs inhibited COX enzymes, leading to a cascade of effects that included anti-inflammatory, analgesic, and antipyretic properties. The weeks were a whirlwind of studying, but Sarah remained dedicated. As she entered week 29, she learned to make real-world decisions. The scenario of a patient who had undergone an ophthalmic surgery a month ago and presented with swelling and pain in the eye prompted her to prescribe diclofenac. Week 30 was about understanding the nuances of aspirin. Sarah knew that a low dose could retain uric acid, while a high dose increased its excretion. The half-life, side effects, and mechanisms intrigued her. Week 31, Sarah dealt with a 65-year-old man diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. She knew that meloxicam was a suitable prescription for his condition. By week 33, she could list three contraindications for aspirin. Peptic ulcers, pregnancy, and hemophilia were on her list. In week 36, she was presented with a complex case involving a patient suffering from congestive heart failure. She knew that taking NSAIDs could result in increased fluid retention, making the patient's condition worse. As the weeks passed, Sarah learned about various bronchodilators, corticosteroids, and other medications used in respiratory care. She also became well-versed in the world of asthma and how to treat it. The curriculum introduced her to the world of leukotriene e inhibitors, long-acting antimuscarinic bronchodilators, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, methylxanthines, and monoclonal antibodies. She found these topics particularly intriguing, as they offered innovative solutions for various respiratory conditions. By the end of her 10 weeks, Sarah had become a well-rounded, knowledgeable student. Her passion for pharmaceuticals had grown, and she looked forward to the exciting journey that pharmacy school had in store for her. The first 10 weeks were just the beginning of a lifetime of learning and helping patients lead healthier lives. Title, Pharmacy School Chronicles, A Journey Through Medicines Once Upon a Time, In the bustling city of Medvali, a group of aspiring pharmacists embarked on their 10-week journey through pharmacy school. The students were eager to dive into the world of medicines and discover the secrets behind those intriguing brand names and their corresponding indications. Week 1, The Mystery of E. Piotin, Professor Williams started the course by introducing the students to a drug called E. Piotin, which went by the brand names Epigen, Procrit, and Reticrit. It was used to treat anemia caused by cancer chemotherapy. 
The class was abuzz with excitement as they began their journey into the intricate world of pharmaceuticals. Week 2, Unveiling Erythromycin Erythromycin, known for its brand name Erythrocin, was the focus of the second week. The students delved into the details of this antibiotic, understanding its role in treating bacterial infections. It was a week of microbiology and a fascinating exploration of how a single medicine could combat various bacterial foes. Week 3, Escitalopram's Healing Touch As the third week commenced, the class discovered the wonders of Escitalopram, commonly sold as Lexapro. They learned how this medication was used to help patients struggling with depression, providing a glimmer of hope and improved mental health. Week 4, The Power of Esomeprazole In the fourth week, the spotlight shifted to Esomeprazole, widely recognized as Nexium. The students were intrigued by its role in eradicating Heliobacter pylori infections in the gastrointestinal tract. They realized that medicines not only treated symptoms but also targeted the root cause of illnesses. Week 5, Estradiol's Feminine Touch, Estradiol Oral, known as Estrace, took center stage in week 5. The students explored its various indications, from addressing vasomotor dysfunction to soothing discomfort in the vagina or vulva. They gained a deeper appreciation for the breadth of medicine's applications. Week 6, Unlocking the Secrets of Esopiclone Week 6 was all about Esopiclone, branded as Lunsta. The students learned how it provided relief to those battling insomnia. They marveled at the idea that a small pill could usher in a peaceful night's sleep. Week 7, Conquering ankylosing spondylitis with Adenercept, the seventh week brought them to the world of immunology, focusing on Adenercept, marketed as Inbril and Aralzy. The class discovered its efficacy in treating ankylosing spondylitis, a condition they hadn't heard of before. The world of pharmaceuticals was expanding their horizons. Week 8 Ethanyl estradiol and adenogestrol ring for contraception, week 8 was a crash course in contraception, as the students delved into ethanyl estradiol and adenogestrol ring, better known as Nuva ring. They understood the importance of family planning and its role in women's health. Week 9, Tackling Pain with Etidolac, Etidolac, branded as Lodine was the star of week 9, where the students learned about its wide-ranging applications in managing general pain. They appreciated the role of medications in improving the quality of life for many. Week 10, The Final Revelation, Exonatide and Beyond, as the 10th week dawned, the students delved into the intricate world of Exonatide, which came in the forms of Biota and Bigerion primarily used to manage diabetes mellitus type 2. Their journey through pharmacy school had come full circle, revealing the power of medicines to transform lives. The students of Medvali Pharmacy School left their 10-week course with newfound knowledge and a profound understanding of the significance of medicines in the world of healthcare. They were eager to embark on their future careers armed with the wisdom and insights gained during their educational journey. Title, Pharmacy School Chronicles, A Journey Through Medicines Chapter 1, The First Ten Weeks in the Quiet Halls of the Prestigious Willowbrook University's School of Pharmacy, a new group of eager students embarked on a journey of knowledge and discovery. Professor Emily Anderson, an expert in pharmacology, stood at the front of the lecture hall on the first day of class. Welcome to the first 10 weeks of your pharmacy school journey, Professor Anderson began, her voice brimming with enthusiasm. Today, we'll dive into the world of medications, their brand names, and indications. 
The class listened intently as Professor Anderson started with Epiodin, known by its brand names Epigen, Procrit, and Reticrit. Epiodin is a medication used to treat anemia caused by cancer chemotherapy. It's a lifeline for those battling cancer and the side effects of their treatment. As the weeks went by, students delved deeper into the world of pharmaceuticals. They learned about the antibiotic erythromycin, effective against bacterial infections. It's the defender of the immune system, Professor Anderson declared, and her students nodded in agreement. Next on the list was escitalopram, a medication known as Lexapro, used to combat depression. A beacon of hope for those battling the darkness, the professor explained. Esomeprazole, or Nexium, was presented as the solution for Heliobacter pylori GI infection. It's the silent hero, fighting the unseen invaders in our stomachs, she said. The class discovered that estradiol oral, under the name estrace, was crucial for conditions related to vasomotor function and atrophic vagina or vulva. A comfort for those experiencing discomfort, Professor Anderson noted. Esopician, commonly known as Lunsta, was introduced as a remedy for insomnia. Lunsta is the peaceful night's sleep in a tiny pill, she said. Adenecrept, in its various brand names, Inbril and Erlzy, became the hope for those suffering from ankylosing spondylitis. The bridge to a life less painful, the professor described. Ethanyl estradiol and adenogestrol ring, commonly known as Nuva ring, was explained as a contraception method. A choice for those wanting to plan their futures, Professor Anderson stated. Etidolac, under the name Lodine, was celebrated as a general pain reliever. A soldier fighting on the front lines against pain, she said. Exonatide, with its brand names Biota and Bigerion, was hailed as the savior for individuals dealing with diabetes mellitus, type 2. The guardian of blood sugar levels, she explained. The list of medications seemed endless, each with its unique purpose and importance. In the coming weeks, students would continue to unravel the mysteries of pharmaceuticals, understanding their effects and potential side effects. Pharmacy school was a journey through the vast landscape of medicines, and the first ten weeks had only been the beginning. The students were ready to embrace the challenges and knowledge that lay ahead, armed with the understanding of the medications that could change lives and offer hope to those in need. Thinking by W.D. Wendell If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't. It is almost a cinch you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in this world we find. Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before. You can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go. To the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Remember, strategy, hard work, collaboration, and execution. You can do it. You can do it. Welcome to the New Chemists Podcast. We are glad you are listening. We are one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemists Podcast. We are so glad you are listening. Feel free to subscribe on Spotify and tell your friends and colleagues about the podcast. Oh, 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 oh,
Sphere by Marion Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You're playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we and our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Our deepest fear by Marion Williams. You are very important, especially to us here at the New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant. Vous êtes très important, surtout pour nous ici au New Chemist Podcasting Group. Votre écoute est significative. Usted es muy importante, especialmente para nosotros aquí en The Nuche Mist Podcasting Group. Usted escuchando, es significativo. Você es muy importante, especialmente para nós do The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Você ouvindo, es significativo. Είστε πολύ σημαντικοί, ειδικά για εμάς εδώ στο The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Το να ακούς είναι σημαντικό. Sie sind sehr wichtig, besonders für uns hier bei The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Es ist wichtig, dass du zuhörst. Je bent erg belangrijk, vooral voor ons hier bij The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Dat je meeluistert, is veel betekenend. You are very important. Especially to us here at The New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Bienvenidos al podcast del nuevo químico. Carlos Irza Testo Podcast to New Chemist. Welcome by the podcast from the New Chemist.
Bienvenue sur le podcast du Nouveau Chimiste. Bem-vindo ao podcast do Novo Químico. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Travaillez dur. Soyez axé sur la valeur. Tu peux le faire. Vous pouvez grandir et l'apprendre. Vous pouvez être la différence dont vous et votre communauté avez besoin. N'abandonnez pas. Nous sommes ici pour vous encourager et vous encourager. N'abandonnez pas. Trabalhar duro. Seja orientado por valores. Você consegue. Você pode crescer e aprender. Você pode ser a diferença que você e sua comunidade precisam. Não desista. Estamos aqui torcendo e torcendo por você. Não desista. Δουλέψε σκληρά. Να οδηγείτε στην αξία. Μπορείς να το κάνεις. Μπορείτε να μεγαλώσετε και να το μάθετε. Μπορείτε να είστε η διαφορά που χρειάζεστε εσείς και η κοινότητά σας. Μην τα παρατάς. Είμαστε εδώ για να σας ζητοκραυγάσουμε. Μην τα παρατάς. Trabaja duro. Sea impulsado por el valor. Puedes hacerlo. Puedes crecer y aprenderlo. Usted puede ser la diferencia que usted y su comunidad necesitan. No te rindas estamos aquí animándote y animándote. No te rindas. Werk hard. Wees waardig gedreven. Je kunt het. Je kunt groeien en leren. U kunt het verschil zijn dat u en uw gemeenschap nodig hebben. Geef niet op. We zijn hier om voor je te roten en te juichen. Geef niet op. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. We are glad you are listening. We are one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast, one of the best chemistry podcasts globally. We are glad you are listening. We encourage you to subscribe and continue to listen.